All right, so today I'm going to talk about what might actually be damaged by either a solar coronal mass ejection or a high altitude nuclear EMP. And once again, I tried to contrast them so people can understand the differences of these two threats. So the first thing to know is both of them can cause extensive damage and can certainly disrupt the country and our infrastructures, and we'll see that here. So we're going to start with the CME first because it's a little bit simpler. So again, refer to the previous video, but a CME is a coronal mass ejection that comes out from the sun. They happen off and on all the time. It's only a matter of time before a very large CME affects the Earth. All right? It's a certainty. It's not an if, but just a when. So what does it do? Well, it generates this plasma that comes over the Earth and essentially perturbates our magnetic fields and causes currents to flow in very long conductors. And by long conductors, I mean things that are many miles long. All right? So if you're worried about a CME, it's only for things that are connected to very, very long conductors. Those are the things that will be affected. So electronics connected to very long conductors, such as the utility power grid, for example, um, could be affected. So one of the big ones are these industrial controllers that control just about everything from telecommunications, water purification, on and on and on you go. Um, power distribution systems. All these things are done by these industrial controllers. And those controllers are often called SCADAs. And there's been a number of tests done to show that SCADAs are quite susceptible to surges on the power lines. All right, so a big CME could certainly uh, cause damage to those SCADAs, those controllers, um, which could disrupt then those infrastructures, whatever it is they're trying to do for the country. In addition to that, you can disrupt things or damage things that are connected to the utility grid. All right, so anything plugged in at the time of a big CME could be could be damaged. Again, remember, a CME is like a swell of energy that will occur on very long conductors, and that energy will push itself into electronic appliances. So computers, appliances, anything really connected to the power grid um, has a reasonable chance of being damaged. The big one that people are worried about in addition to these SCADAs are the power distribution transformers. So transformers just convert from one voltage to another voltage and they're used throughout our power distribution system. And a CME can certainly cause damage. These ground currents that flow could cause damage to those transformers. And some of the large transformers, they're talking about the size of buildings, are very difficult to repair or replace. And that was one of the big uh, findings of the EMP commission was that if those transformers became damaged, you could be without power for a very long period of time, months, maybe even a year. They're very difficult to replace. So the key thing about a CME is to remember that energy is flowing on very long conductors, not small scale things. So things that are safe are things like cars. Cars are relatively small. They certainly don't have mile long conductors in them. And so cars are safe with the exception of if they're plugged into the power grid. If they're plugged into the power grid, such as an electric car or a hybrid car, then they have chance of being damaged. Laptops and other freestanding electronics. Well, certainly these things should be safe because if they're not plugged in, they're just sitting on a table somewhere, there's really no way for the CME energy to get into them. Solar power um, generation systems are generally considered safe from a CME as long as they don't have a utility connection back, right? If they have a feed that they're providing energy back to the grid, that same feed could provide energy into them and cause them damage, all right? So if they're not grid tied, then in general, a CME isn't considered to be able to hurt them. And finally, people always ask about batteries. Batteries are safe from CMEs. Um, if they had a battery monitoring system and they were plugged in, all right, so they had a long conductor that enabled the energy to come into them, then those battery monitoring system circuits could be damaged. All right, but by themselves, if they're just freestanding, they're not going to be damaged. All right, so that's the CME. Let's talk about the EMP. Now, for an EMP, what we're talking about is a high altitude nuclear generated EMP. That means you detonate a warhead way up in the atmosphere, hundreds of miles, detonates it, causes this giant gamma burst that comes down, uh, ionizes air molecules, a bunch of current flows, and there's all, and all kinds of things are affected by uh, that electrical energy. So it's very similar to the CME in that there's a component of the EMP that does couple into very long conductors, just like that. So all those things that we just talked about being affected would also be affected by an EMP. All right, so I'm not going to rewrite those, but those same SCADAs, the power of transformers and so forth could all be affected. Plus, to make it worse, it can also affect small electronics. All right, so for example, freestanding electronics with solid state circuits. These could be things like phones and radios and laptops your vehicles could be damaged as well. So things like cars and trucks and boats and airplanes could all be affected 
by an EMP where they would not be by a solar CME. And then medical devices. Now, a lot of people worry about, let's say, like a pacemaker or hearing aids, the things that keep them functioning. And yes, those could be damaged. Those are pretty modern electronics that could be damaged. So hearing aids, pacemakers, insulin pumps, any kind of electronic -y device, medical or otherwise, could certainly be damaged by this EMP energy. Electro-optics. So if you have like a red dot on a rifle, people wonder, could that be damaged? It's not likely. They're pretty small scale and they're pretty ruggedized in metal housings, but it's certainly possible. It's one reason I wrap mine up in conductive cloth. Even while it's on the rifle, I just wrap it up. Multimeters or electronic tools and test equipment, also those could be damaged, all right? So if you're counting on those to be used to debug things, you should put them in a Faraday cage or some protective enclosure. Portable power backup systems. So these are the, the small generators that are, you know, everybody has nowadays. Some of them have little solar panels that fold out, but some of them are just a battery operated system. Those could certainly be damaged as, all, as well, which is why I recommend things like the trap or conductive cloth to cover them up. Solar power generation systems. Even if they don't have a utility grid connection, they could still be damaged by an EMP. All right, the panels themselves are unlikely to be damaged until you hook up the long conductors. But once you hook up the long conductors, it's possible. And the inverters could also be damaged. So there's certainly things that could be damaged by those. And I've talked about how you might protect your solar power generation systems. So what's safe? Well, not a whole heck of a lot. Heavy duty motors and generators, things that don't have any solid state electronics in them. All right, just really heavy duty things with just big coils of wire. They're not going to be affected. Batteries, again, batteries are safe, standard alkaline batteries are safe. If they have a battery monitoring system, that could be, this battery management system could be affected by the EMP. So it could cause damage to some sophisticated, let's say lithium ion batteries that had uh, a charging control system in them. Things without solid state electronics, all right? So anything that's really old and doesn't have modern electronics in it is much less likely to be affected, all right? That's because the gate dimensions on those transistors and those devices are much, much larger. And so old cars, for example, well, they did have controllers. They weren't based on these really fast, tiny microelectronics that we have in today's cars. All right. So those kinds of things would be relatively safe. All right. So a lot of stuff can be damaged, which is why we try and take protections and precautions to safeguard our equipment. Um, many people wonder, well, what good is it to safeguard your personal electronics if the country's all collapsed, the grid is all collapsed? But again, what I always tell people is it gives you options, right? You might have a secondary power system like a generator or a solar power generation system. If you can keep your house and your property functioning, you would be much better off than if everything's uh, damaged, all right? All right, so I hope this is helpful. This talks about the damage that might occur from an EMP or solar CME.